Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Uh, it's time for our weekend minister's briefing. And so uh, I had originally uh, uh, planned on going a different route, uh, but with a, a conversation I had today with a uh, what I consider a gold standard leader, uh, Bishop Mitch Quarter. I uh, check in with him. He's always reading something good for that I, he recommends, or he's got an idea, he's got a thought. And you got to keep people like that in your life. And so he knew the drill. I asked him, well, what's the one thing that you could give me today? And uh, and he said, and this is uh, what I want to be on my lesson. I've been thinking about it all afternoon. And uh, so I'm going to give credit to him for, get, for good or bad, <laughs> getting me going down this uh, trail. But he, I said, what's the one thing? And he said, this is what leaders do. Leaders initiate and they innovate. Leaders initiate, and they innovate. And then he, and, and he didn't go into a lot of detail, but he says innovation is different than creativity. Innovating is different than creating. So I've been thinking about that all afternoon, and uh, I, I, he's on to something, and I look back over my own life and where most of you are uh, in your ministry. And uh, I think this is going to be encouraging and helping, uh, helpful for you. So let's jump into it. I've entitled it, What Leaders Do, The Importance of Initiating Innovation. So i uh, give you an example. I remember my second missions trip. My first missions trip, I went with a, a group of uh, people, and, and I wasn't in charge. I just went, and, and I uh, was a, a gopher, go for this and go for that. Uh, the second, but I got bit with the missions bug. And so I started taking trips. And so we started. So this one, uh, my church initiated it. And and I had men around me that were the project leaders, but I was sort of the nominal spiritual head or whatever as the pastor. We got there and, and it, we went to Jamaica. And there's parts of Jamaica that is beautiful and uh, but there's other parts of it that's really kind of third world. And we've gone into uh, the heart of in a really rough area in Kingston, Jamaica, and we were going to help a Church of God congregation there build uh, a, a new building, a new church. And so we got there and we dug, dug uh, the footers and all that kind of stuff. And it was time to pour the cement. So we were going to do that the next morning. And uh, so we showed up ready to go. And, uh, and he uh, said, uh, he asked the pastor, he says, uh, well, when's the cement truck going to get here? And he says, we don't have cement trucks. He said, I, when you said to order the cement, uh, over there it is. And, I, and we all looked over there and there was a big, there were big piles of gravel, uh, piles of sand and, and cement mix. And we had to mix our own, uh, cement. We had to, it was like making biscuits or something. Well, there was a formula. We had to put so much gravel, so many scoops of gravel, so much sand, and all that, and and had to have a the water hose and get the water and the consistency just right. And so there we were. You know, we were used to having the best, uh, maybe, but there we had to innovate. We had to uh, come up with with what we had and get the job done. Well, that's where most of us live every day. And so here's the issue that I want to address. I've been thinking about this all afternoon, and I see so many guys struggle with it. And uh, in a perfect world, you know, it would be great. Things would be perfect, but things are not perfect. So here's the issue I want you to consider. It's easy to become so enamored with being creative that it becomes about our creativity and not the mission. Uh, we've got all these creative people, churches around us, and we feel like we've got to be creative. We've got to come up with some novel, new way to do church, way to preach or whatever. And I, re I remember, uh, it's blase now, but I remember when PowerPoint first came out. And man, we got the screen. We had the big screen up on the, on the uh, wall, and I was really working. I would spend hours uh, it got to the point that I would spend more time working on the perfect PowerPoint presentation. I spent more time working on that than I did the message. And it was so complicated. And 
And it was overwhelming to people. They couldn't keep up with it. And it became a distraction. And finally, I just dumbed it down, uh, did some research, and you get too much on there. And I just had a simple PowerPoint to help people follow along with me. But I got so enamored with being creative that I, I compromised the mission. And I see guys doing that all the time. We, and, and they feel less than because they don't have the resources to be creative. And so I want to remind you of the dangers of creativity. There's a danger there. We can get so enamored with it that we compromise the mission. First of all, if you're not careful when you're focusing on being creative, just like me with the PowerPoint, you, it becomes about the presentation. Church becomes a show. Church becomes, and I don't say that in a negative way, but it's about the show. It's about the program. It's, a, it's about the worship set. It's about getting everything right. It's about the presentation and not the mission. We lose sight of the mission while we're there, while we're doing what we're doing. Weddings are a great example. How many of you guys, in the, you've been involved in weddings, and man, it gets so out of hand. The bride's got, got this, she's wanting to get creative, or somebody in the group, and they come up, you know, we want to be out on the beach and have the sun setting at a certain time, or you know, I, I don't know. It's just crazy stuff. You know, the, everything's got to be just right, and, and they end up getting frustrating and angry, and it becomes a just a drudgery getting through a wedding when that should be the most happy day of their life up to that point. But they, they get enamored with being creative with the presentation and they forget why they're doing it. Uh, another danger of creativity is that there's always someone more creative. There's always going to be people that have more talent, more resources. They personally may be more creative. There's always somebody going to be better than you. If it's about being creative, if it's about being the most novel church in town, then there's always going to be somebody better than you. But there's a third thing. It's the law of diminishing return. You, when, when being creative is the standard, we, you know, the uh, people, my staff would come to me all the time. You know, we just had this gadget. We had these lights. If we had this technology, if we could just do this, if we could bring them in, if we could have this. And, and after a while, I, I, would, I would just tell them, don't come to me if your solution costs money because it never works. It's the law of diminishing return. How, how fine of a sound system do you need? What level quality light? How many lights do you really need? How much creativity, the latest, the best, how much do you need? It's kind of like, I'm not big on watching beauty pageants, but it's kind of like watching a beauty pageant. And you have all these beautiful, gorgeous girls, one after another. After a while, the law of diminishing return. They're just all kind of average after a while. You just want it to be over. And that and that's what happens in church so many times. It becomes a show. It becomes about the presentation. And after a while, there's just there's another church downtown. They're doing it like that across town on TV. And and the creativity ends up undermining the mission. So I want to encourage you to think about innovation. Now, that's a whole different mindset. Let's look at it this way. What happens with innovation is you, you take what you got and you use it to get the mission done. It's about the mission. That's what matters, not being creative. It, picture in your mind, uh, fellas, I'll, I'll, I'll use a, a, an example from a, a man's point of view and work both ways. But you, you look outside, you hear a, a commotion outside, an explosion, and you look and your wife was pulling out of the car, the driveway to uh, maybe take the kids to school and the car is on fire and your wife is there and she's looking and she's screaming and the kids are screaming and you can't, uh, they can't get out. She's panicked, they can't get out. And maybe the car's jammed, maybe whatever happened, they can't get out. And you're standing there, you're going to innovate. Ideally, it'd be great to have the fire department there in a, in a moment, and they've got those special axes, and they can break the windows. And but you're going to do what you, what has to be done. You're going to look around for a rock. You're going to use your fist. You, you're going to rescue them or die 
trying. That's what's at stake with us in the ministry. People are going to die and go to hell if we don't become a, a roadblock that will help them to see that there's a way of escape. And so innovation, instead of just being create, creative, innovation takes what you've got and focuses on the mission. Another beauty, beautiful thing about innovation is that it requires nothing more than what you've got. You know, the old joke about duct tape and bailing wire, if, if that'll solve any problem. If, it, if it, that doesn't take care of it, you don't need to deal with it. Uh, that, but innovation allows you to take what you've got and you figure out how can I achieve the mission with what I got. I don't have to have more. It'd be nice, but in a perfect world, we'd have all that stuff, but we don't have a perfect world. We don't have a bottomless uh, well of money that we can tap. We don't have a, a big staff. We don't have a lot of creative people. We have to take what we got, and that's okay. I remember coming into church one Sunday, and a, a toilet was backed up, and it was spilling all over the place, and, and there's water running everywhere, and it, been, it would have really been nice to have a plumber to come in, somebody that knew what they were doing. But you know what worked? A plunger, an old broom and a bucket and a mop. And we got that thing uh, unstopped uh, and we cleaned up the mess and the church carried on because we had church that day. I didn't have time. Well, we're going to call church off and we'll call a plumber and, and by next Sunday we'll have it all solved. No, you have to just get in there and work with what you've got. And so innovation, it keeps the mission, not that you're being creative, but it keeps the mission central. And it allows you to solve the problem with what you've got. And then the last thing, it changes the standard from being the best to giving your best, which opens the door for everybody in your church to get involved. Let's be honest, in a lot of our churches, when it becomes about being creative, when it becomes about being the best, when it comes about keeping up with the, the great church across town that is, they're doing ever they're so creative and we're trying to mimic them, then it excludes most of our people. We're always looking for the perfect worship team. We, the music's got to be just right. We, we're, uh, we, we can't let just ordinary people, no, that would be an embarrassment. They may miss a note. I remember, as I was reflecting on this today, I remember some of the choirs that we used to have, Sanja and I. Every church, you know, you don't have choirs anymore, uh, but we had choirs in those days. And, man, some of those people, they couldn't sing, but we worked with what we got. And there's something about it. The more people you have on the platform, the more people you have in the pew. Now we've narrowed it down. We, got, we, we, we want to have everything to be so perfect. But when you are willing to just innovate and work with what you've got, then everybody can get involved. You can use anybody. It's not about the show. And people show up and they see, they, 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 this guy cares about us. This is about the mission. It's not about competing with somebody across town or looking good, but we are on, we are on a mission and we're gonna work with what we got. Brothers and sisters, you can do that. You can do that. Who was the greatest innovator that ever existed? Well, it turns out the greatest innovator was also the greatest creator, God. But he was a master innovator. He looked at Moses. He said, what do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? David looked around. He used David and a sling. I like Shamgar, the judge. All he had was an ox goad. Then he prod the, the oxen as it was a farmer, just a farmer. Think about the disciples. You know, let's feed all these people. Well, all we got is the little lad's lunch. All right, let's start with that. And so here's the question. And I want to leave. Here, here's what I want to encourage you to do is constantly ask yourself, how can I achieve the mission with what I've got? 
how can I achieve reaching this community and discipling them for Christ with what I got? You may not have the, the ideal location. You may not have the ideal parking. You may not have a church that's, that's, that's new and modern. You may not have the latest gadgets. You may not be the sharpest knife in the drawer. Only one person can be the best. Only one person can be the most creative. You may not be creative, but you can give your best. God called you. He's not looking for superstars. He's looking for people that will take what's in their hand and say, God, will you anoint it and help me to rescue the perishing? And that's how and why initiating and innovating is what leaders do. You and I can do that. All right. God bless you. Let's keep running to win for the gospel's sake. I'll see you around the bend. Blessings to everybody.